Hello dear friends, welcome back to my YouTube channel Mukesh English. This is Mukesh Soni. In this video, I'm going to read Chief Seattle's speech. Chief Seattle was Northwest Coast Indian of Suquamish tribe and should give the name to the city of Seattle. He played an important role of the White Peace Treaties as a prelude to negotiating treaties with the United States. He delivered a speech to Governor Stevens in 1854. it is this speech that is called chief seattle speech chief seattle's beautiful speech from 1854 have through the ages be interpreted and cons- and construed in many ways here we are going to read the version of ted perry ted perry's version of the speech the theme the speech was a response to the treaty of the american government for buying the land of native americans The speech throws light on the carelessness of the white people towards the environment. Moreover, it focuses on the degradation of ecological balance and the plea to protect nature. The speech is thus acclaimed with high esteem. Now, let's go through the speech. The chief, the great chief in Washington sends word The great chief in Washington sends words that wishes to buy our land. The great chief also sends us words of friendship and goodwill. This this is kind of him since we know he has little needs a need of a friendship in return but we will consider your, uh, your offer because we know that if we do not sell the white man may come with guns and take our land. how can you buy yourself the sky the warmth of the land the idea is strange to us if we do not own the freshness of the air and the sparkle of the water how can we buy them all sacred every part of this earth is sacred to my people every shining pine needle every sandy shore every mist in the dark woods every clearing and humming insect is holy in the memory and the experience of my people the sap which courses through the trees carries the memories of the red men the white men's dead forget the country of the birth when they go to walk among the stars our dead never forget this beautiful earth for it is the mother of the red men we are part of the earth and it is part of us the perfumed flowers are our sisters the dee the ho the horse the great eagle these are our brothers the rocky crest the juices in the meadows the body heat of the pony and the men all belong to the same family not easy so when the great chief in washington sends words that he wishes to buy our land he ask much of us the great chief sends word he will reserve us a place so that we can live comfortably to ourselves he will be our father and we will be his children so we will consider your offer to buy our land but it will not be easy for this land is sacred to us the shining water <clears throat> that moves in the streams and the rivers is not just water but the blood of our ancestors if we sell our land you must remember that it is sacred and you must teach your children that it is sacred and that each ghostly reflection in the clear water of the lakes tells of events and the memories of the life of my of my people the water's murmur is the voice of my father's father <clears throat> kindness the rivers are our brothers they quench our thirst the rivers carry our canoes and feed our children we if we sell our land you must remember and teach your children that the rivers are our brothers and yours and you must henceforth give the rivers the kindness you give your any brother we know that the white man does not understand our ways one portion of land is the same to him as the next for he is a stranger who comes in the night and takes from the land whatever he needs the earth is not his brother but his enemy when he has conquered it he moves on he leaves his father's grave behind and he does not care he kidnaps the earth from his children and he does not care his father's grave and his children's bright right his birth right are forgotten he treats his mother 
the earth, his brother, the sky as things to be bought, plundered, sold like sheep or bright breads, bright beets. His appetite will devour the earth and leave behind only desert. I do not know. Our ways are our, our ways from our I'm sorry, our ways are different from your ways. The sight of your cities pains the eyes of the red man, but perhaps it is because the red man is a savage and does not understand. There is no quiet place in the white man's cities, no place to hear the unfurling of leaves in spring or the rustle of an insect's wings, but perhaps it is because I am a savage and do not understand. The clatter only seems to insult the ears. And what is there to life if a man cannot hear the lonely cry of the whipper will, whipper will, or the arguments of the frogs around a pond at night? I'm a red man and do not understand. The Indian prefers the soft sound of the wind darting over the face of a pond, the smell of the wind itself cleaned by a midday rain or scented with pinion pine. Precious. The air is precious to the red man, for all things share the same breath, the beast, the tree, the men, they all share the same breath. The white man does not seem to notice the air he breathes. Like a man dying for many days, he is numb to the stench. But if we sell you our land, you must remember that the air is precious to us, that the air shares its spirit with all the life it supports. The wind that gave our grandfather his first breath also receives his last sigh. And if we sell you our land, you must keep it apart and sacred as a place where even the white man can go to taste the wind that is sweetened by the meadow's flowers. One condition. So we will consider your offer to buy our land. If we decide to accept, I will make one condition. The white man must treat the beast of this land as his brothers. I am a savage. And I do not understand in any other way. I have seen a thousand rotting buffaloes on the prairie left by the white man who shot them from a passing train. I am a savage and I do not understand how the smoking iron horse can be more important than the buffalo that we kill only to stay alive. What is a man without the beast? If all the beasts were gone, man would die from a great loneliness of the spirit. For whatever happens to the beast soon happens to men. All things are connected. Remember, that is the condition. The ashes. You must teach your children that the ground beneath their feet is the ashes of your grandfathers so that they will respect the land. Tell your children that the earth is rich, the earth is rich with the lives of a kin. Teach your children what we have taught our children, the what teach your children that what we have taught our children that the earth is a mother, whatever befalls the earth, befalls the sons of the earth. If men spit upon the ground, they spit upon themselves. This we know. The earth does not belong to men, men belongs to earth. This we know. All things are connected like the blood which unites one family. All things are connected. Whatever befalls the earth befalls the sons of the earth. Man did not weave the web of life. He is merely strand in it. Whatever he does to the web, he does to himself. Even the white man whose God walks and talks with him as a friend to friend cannot be exempt from the common destiny. We may be brothers after all. We shall see. One thing we know, which the white man may one day discover, our God is the same God. You may think now that you own him as you wish to own a land, but you cannot. He is the God of men and his compassion is equal for the red man and the white man. This earth is precious to him, 
and to harm the earth is to heap contempt on its creator. The whites too shall pass, perhaps sooner than all other tribes. Contaminate your bed, your bed, and you will one night suffocate in your own waste. But in your perishing, you will shine brightly, fired by the strength of the God who brought you to this land and for some official purpose gave you dominion over this land and over the red man. The, the destiny is a mystery to us because we do not understand when the buffalo all are slaughtered, the wild horses are tamed, the secret corners of the forest heavy with scent of many men, the views of the rip hills blotted by talking wires. Where is the thicket? Gone. Where is the eagle? Gone. The end of living and the beginning of survival. The speech closes here. Now, I'm going to tell you the summary of the speech very briefly. Chief Seattle began his speech expressing his concerns towards the nature. He was worried about environmental degradation and its probable effects on the mankind on failing to undertake effective measures. According to him, nature has assisted him and his races for a long time. Nature has provided them with all the essentials. However, the lack of proper measures will put the future in great trouble. Then, he ascertains his reliability by correlating his words to stars that never change. Similarly, he won't change his, his point of view in response to the land treaty. Moreover, Seattle calls the president kind as he offers friendship and goodwill. Furthermore, he talks about the terrible condition of his people. Their population has declined over time and they have remained a few. He holds the white people responsible for the unpleasant condition of the Red Indians. He criticizes them for forcing their way into the native lands, regarding themselves superior to them. Moreover, he criticizes white people for their disrespect towards the land, land, right, land rights and the cultural values of the tribals. Also, Seattle criticizes the youth of his own race for their irresponsible and insensible behavior. Also, Seattle mentions about the help offered by the president if they agreed to the land treaty. The president has proposed to safeguard the women, children, and the old men of the natives from the attacks of the enemies, namely like uh, Haidas, etc. In such a case, the president would be their guardian and the father. However, he doubts that this will ever happen. According to him, the cultural differences between the two races is the reason for the lack of mutual understanding between them. After all, they have different origins and different destinies. White people have, attend, have attained all the love and the care of God. However, the tribals have been deprived of the same and thus they have come to the point of, point of extinction. Further, Seattle says that the tribals have respect for the ancestors and they visit their graves. However, the white people have no emotions of love and respect and also they don't care about the world after their deaths. Therefore, they never visit their people and places again. He also mentions that religion, the religion of the white people is somewhat mechanical and artificial, and artificial in nature. It is not felt by the heart. However, however, the religion of natives is the tradition of the, of the ancestors and the dreams. Moreover, Seattle prepares his people for the impending doom as no one will be spared from the time decay. It's a common fate that white men cannot defy. He still agrees to the proposal of the government. However, Seattle says that they shall be allowed to visit the graves of the ancestors. Moreover, he warns the president to be just and must deal kindly with the people. He warned that the spirits of the tribals would seek revenge if they are mistreated. 
So we can conclude saying that Seattle's speech consists of the arguments in support of native land, rights, and respect for nature. However, he hopes that their good father in Washington would safeguard them and also his brave warriors would prove to be a great strength. Thank you so much for listening. Dear friends, thank you so much for watching this video. You can reach me at mukeshenglish at the rate of gmail.com. Please do subscribe the channel. Click on the like button for more videos on literature, workbook, pronunciation, grammar, communication skills, presentation skills, interview skills. Stay in tune with Mukesh English. Thank you once again.